our YouTube channel. Okay, in this class, we'll be discussing about some problems uh, of center of mass and its applications. These problems are actually JE problems. They have they have come in JE uh, in the past few years. It's not just about discussing these problems, but also about the way the lines you must think around during the during the examination because once you do any problem in the examination, it, it it doesn't always come right you need to have new ideas you need to like know how to think along new lines while solving any problem you need to get hold of the strategies along which you should think so it's more about discussing all those things and so without any further ado let's start okay so this is our first problem this is with, this came in je main i don't remember the year but it came in the je main okay so what does it say a 20 gram bullet pierces through a bullet plate of mass uh, 1 kg and then comes to rest inside the second plate of mass 2.98 kg right it is found that these plates are initially at rest now moving in equal velocity find the percentage loss in the initial velocity of the bullet when it is between m1 and m2 neglect any loss of material of the plate due to the action of the bullet okay so what does it signify that a bullet pierces to a plate of metal m1 and then comes to rest inside the second plate of thing m2 so we have actually two plates here Okay, so let's uh, draw this one. So this is my plate one. Okay, and this is our plate two. It's not of this angle. Uh, let's um, um, one side this. It's more of like um, like this. You know, like. Uh, your second plate and let's say this is, a, this is your bullet okay so what happens is it this passes through this uh, plate uh, after that what happens if it passes through this plate what will happen due to conservation of momentum this will this plate will gain some velocity okay and let's call this v and this bullet will lose some velocity let this is the bullet. Uh, let this velocity be v1 now. Okay, so this will lose some velocity. Initial let it be u. Okay, because we are given the percentage loss in the initial velocity, so we don't know anything. So let us consider it to be u. Okay, so after passing through the first bullet, first plate, it, uh, it the, uh, the bullet attains a velocity of v1. It will obviously lose some velocity because uh, of the energy loss and all on hitting. And this bullet, this plate will also gain some velocity v. And after that, what happens is that um, this bullet, this bullet will with velocity v one is going to hit this plate right on here. So now what happens is that now um, and it comes to rest inside the second plate. So basically, this bullet is now after after the impact, this bullet is now embedded in in here. The bullet is now embedded in this in this plate. And they move with velocity v only because uh, they now move with equal velocities because this plates uh, it's, it is said that they attain equal velocity after impact. So basically, what happened was that this bullet came with velocity u. It hit this one, pierced through basically. So it attains a velocity v1, and this plate attains a velocity v. And after that, what will happen is that this bullet on impacting upon this got embedded into this, and they start that moving together. All right. So that's what's happening here. So um scroll down. Yeah. So primarily let the bullet have a mass, let's say M. Okay. And uh, this plate had the mass, I guess M capital M1, right? Let's not get into the uh the magnitude right now. Let's take with normal notations only. And this is M2. Okay, so during first impact, let's say first impact obviously there is no external fo force into the system okay so the momentum would, of the system would be conserved of this bullet and the block so initially it was moving with velocity u this is a bullet and this plate it was at rest now what happened the bullet of course lost some velocity is now moving with velocity v dash v let's suppose v dash because we considered those two as v 
and this plate is moving with a velocity v. So on conserving momentum, this is of mass m, small m, let's suppose, and this is of m1. So on conserving momentum, we get that mu plus m into 0 because it was initially at rest is now equal to mv dash, which is the final velocity of the bullet, and m1 v. Okay. So this is the this is the equation that we get. So basically, m u is equal to m v dash plus m one v. Okay. Now this is our first equation over here. Now we take into consideration the second impact. Let's take this second impact. Now, after hitting this uh, this plate, now it's moving with velocity v dash. So now, initially, this bullet bullet has velocity v dash, and the other plate m two uh, plate this is at rest, right? Now, after impact, what happens? This bullet gets embedded into the plate. So the entire system, uh, let this be the bullet. So the new mass of this entire system is now m2 plus m, and they are moving with the velocity equal to the first plate. That is what is given, right? That uh, these two plates are now moved with equal velocity. So uh, we considered in the first impact that this first plate is moving with velocity v. So now the entire system is moving with velocity v. So now what we can say is. What is the initial momentum? Now also the momentum would be conserved during the second impact. Okay, so basically this was m once again. So we can say that m v dash plus um, m two into zero that is equal to m two plus m whole times v, right? Uh, so that gives us basically m v dash is equal to m two plus m into v right this is our um, second equation so now we have got our two equations now what do we need to find out the percentage loss in the initial velocity when it is between m1 and m2 now when the time between m1 and m2 is when this bullet has this velocity of v dash Okay, it hit this M1, it appears to this and it got embedded into this. So during this interval, from while it was traveling from M1 to M2, it had this velocity V dash that we considered. Alright, so we need to basically find a relationship between the initial velocity U and the final velocity when it was between M1 and M2, V dash. But in this equation, we can see that we have this third unknown that is capital V. So basically, we need to replace this V somehow, right? And here we have got another equation of v dash and v. So what we do here is we take this v in terms of v dash and put it over here in this equation. Okay, so let's do that. So now from this, what is v? V is basically m v dash by m two plus m, right? Now from equation one. From one, what do we have? Um, let's change its color. From one, we had what? Mu. Uh, Mu is equal to m v dash plus m one times v, right? So basically, now we replace this uh, v with a uh, v in terms of this v dash. So basically, this is mu is equal to m v dash plus m one, and what is v? Uh, v is m v dash by m two plus m. Now we have m m m common over here, so we can basically cancel all of these out. Uh, so u da u and taking v dash common, what we have one plus um, m one plus m two plus m. Right, so basically, this is now we what we do, we put the values okay. So, what was the m1? 
m1 was 1 kg so this is m1 is 1 uh, cos m1 is equal to 1 kg what is m2 m2 is that 2.98 kg um, 2.98 kg and what is our m small m that is the mass of the bullet that's 20 grams so our small m that is equal to 20 grams is equal to 20 into a minus 3 kg uh, basically it's uh, 0 0.02 kg right so basically our denominator is 2.98 plus 0 0.02 so basically we have got um, g dash uh, 1 plus 1 by c so we can say u is equal to v dash into 4 by c or we can say v dash is equal to c by 4 of u now this u was in initial velocity and v is the v dash is the velocity between the, these two plates okay so we need to find the percentage loss right uh, uh, we need to find the percentage loss in the initial velocity so what is the loss that we encounter the loss is u initial velocity minus v dash which is nothing than c by u minus c by 4 of u which is equal to u by 4 so the what is the percentage loss so percentage loss is equal to u by 4 by u into 100 percent which is equal to 1 by 4 into 100 percent which is 25 percent right so we have 25 in answer let us see mm, yeah so we have 25 so this is our answer of this question this is basically easy question if you can see but it just requires clarity you need to think about the think about what happens you need to have a proper picture about what's happening right so this is a quite proper question let's move on to the next one okay so what do we have here uh, two particles a and b initially at rest move towards each other under the mutual force of attraction at the instant when the speed of the a is v and the speed of v is 2v the speed of the center of mass of the system okay now it's pretty straightforward question we don't even need to touch the pen over here so basically see initially we had two particles okay they had they had been separated right so this is let's say a and this is b now they start moving under mutual force of attraction so due to some force mutual force let's say gravity or charge i don't know what kind of particles they're talking about anything so they start moving with the with towards each other now this mutual force of attraction they act upon each other so suppose this b is at attracting a with the force f so this a is also attracting b with the force f so the net force upon this system is zero okay because this is internal forces right so since there are internal forces there is no actually any force upon the center of mass of the system okay so it's just in the place it's supposed to be since the very beginning so the center speed of center of mass is nothing but uh, zero you see like you don't need to even touch the pen pen in this question so it's pretty straightforward okay you just need to have your concepts clear this v and 2v doesn't matter because initially because they were wherever they are like they are exerting even equal opposite force on each other so if you take a and b as a system the net force on the system is zero okay the system is not introduced to anything new it's it so the center of mass is uh, at the same place as, as it is supposed to be since the very beginning okay so yeah it's a straightforward question um let's move on to the next one okay so here we have a question from iit jee 1985 okay let's see what it says um a uniform chain of length l and mass m is lying on a smooth table and one third of its length is hanging vertically down over the edge of the table if g is the acceleration due to gravity the work required to pull the hanging part on the table is okay so you come across these questions quite a lot um i guess you have seen this question but if i have not um let's do this so basically what it says is that we have this table okay 
and here this chain kind of thing okay so let's say this is a chain this is a chain and this hanging right a uh, one third of this length is hanging vertically down the table so if this let the entire chain length of the chain length of the chain length is l so basically this part l by c that is hanging from the table and l l 2 l by c is over the table right so basically what we have to do uh, if g is acceleration due to gravity the work required to pull the hanging part onto the table so what you need to do you need to pull this part this part you need to pull over the table so that at the end this looks like somewhat like this that the entire chain is over the table okay so how can we do this let's try for some time because if it's absolutely new then it's actually not a very bad question it's pretty good so if you finish trying let's think okay so first do let us do this the hard way okay let's do this the hard way first what do we have we have this chain over here in this manner okay so what we do is in the vertical section let's say this one okay it's like this um so from the bottom we uh, sorry yeah so basically from the bottom let us take a section let's say x above x section from the bottom okay now uh this length x okay so what is the length mass of this section this the mass of the section is lambda dx well lambda is a mass lambda x sorry not dx um uh, lambda x well lambda is a mass per unit length and what is lambda lambda is m by l so the mass of the section is m by l into x now what is the work done in pulling this x above by a distance dx like if we pull this section with our force with our hand let's say, say by x above dx above so what would be the for what would be the work done so work done in pulling the length x by our uh, distance equal to dx that is basically uh, what is work work is f times f dot dx so it's uh, nothing other than what is f f is equal to equal equal to the weight of this uh, block because the, at this that is the force with which the gravity is pulling it down so in order to pull it up we need to apply an equal and opposite force upon it so it is a uh, dm uh, g basically which is the for weight of this thing into dx so that is like m by l x g dx right so what is the work done in pulling this entire length from this bottom up to above so this x so basically work done in pulling the entire vertical length okay so what is the work done in pulling the entire vertical length it is equal to we need to integrate this uh a work work in pulling x right and where does this vary from it varies from 0 to l by 3 why because this x x we start from here and we end at here because we pull this entire length above right so the entire length is changing from x to l by 3 0 to l by 3 so basically this is varying from uh, 0 to l by 3 so integrating we get that mg by l into x square by 2 which is varying from l by 3 to 0 which is equal to mg by l 
into 1 by 2 into basically L square by 9 a minus 0 so which is equal to mg by L into 1 by 2 into L square by 9 uh, so which is equal to mg L by 18 so this one is our answer okay so this was the hard way of doing this problem but I think we have an easier approach to the same problem okay so second method we will do this by seeing the displacement of the center of mass so see initially okay initially what was there this uh, and this this is how the chain was right so if you look at this part of the chain okay where is the center of mass located this the entire length was l by 3 so its middle that is here is located l by 6 from the above right so basically what is the work done the work done is pulling this mass the center of mass from this point to this point because while it is horizontal like this the entire chain is horizontal then the center of mass the center of mass is somewhere like uh, this chain is somewhere like here okay like this part so basically when it's vertical when I basically when the chain is entirely pulled up the center of mass lies over here somewhere over here right and now it's over here l by 6 from the top so what is the uh, work done in pulling in pulling that is equal to basically the mass of this thing into the length of this thing into the in, in, into the height with which height to which it was pulled so basically what was the mass of this part the length of this part was m by 3 l, l by 3 so the mass of this section was m by 3 fair enough because it's a uniform length right so because if l by 3 is hanging over here then the mass must also be m by 3 fair enough so m by 3 mass into the g which is the weight so this is the weight of this thing into its displacement so displacement was l by 6 minus finally it became 0 over here if this is 0 and this was l by 6 so the length with to which it was pulled up was l by 6 so this is again mg l by 18 so without integrating we solve the same question okay so once again and the L by 18 is our answer. This is a pretty decent question. Um, it could be done by integration, but uh, I guess this approach was easier by the displacement of the center of mass of this, this part of this uh, of the chain, because this isn't very intuitive actually, but it works, right? So these are the two approaches. So moving on to the next question, uh, which is our last question for today. Uh, this is a beautiful question that we have here okay if you get the concept clear only then you can do this question otherwise you won't be able to do it okay so what it says it says that two blocks a and b each of mass m are connected by a massless spring of natural length l and spring constant k the blocks are initially resting on a smooth horizontal flow with the spring at its natural length as shown in the figure a third identical block C also of mass M moves on the flow with speed V along the line joining A and B and collides elastically with A. Okay, uh, then we need to find this thing. So what is happening here? We have A and B connected by a string. Right, and they are resting. And we have this block C moving it towards this a with v now it is said that all these have uh, all these blocks are identical so the masses would be the same and prime firstly c hits upon a it hits a okay so what will happen at first we let us see what happens in this question okay so basically at first c hits a so after hitting a it is a would acquire some velocity v it's still connected to b but it has acquired some velocity v right and this c 
it must also apply some velocity v v dash but it is uh, yeah which is equal it will be equal to zero because it is elastic it is set okay you know what happens in elastic collision right if two equal blocks collide um they the uh, the, the one block for uh, transfer the velocity to other block upon collision okay so if you don't know it is very simple to see uh, what is uh, let us say that uh, uh, C is approaching this with V, right? So, what is our co coefficient of velocity E? That is the velocity of separation by velocity of approach. Okay, so what is the velocity of separation? Velocity of separation, let's say that uh, Vc, that this is a C block that moves with Vc after collision, and this A moves with V after collision, right? So, basically, that is it. Uh, what is the velocity of separation? That's equal to Va minus Vc. And what was the velocity of approach? Uh, only C was moving, so it was uh, nothing other than V, right? And coefficient velocity equal to 1. So basically, V is equal to VA minus VC, which is the equation 1. Now, once again, there is no uh, external force upon the system, so the momentum would be conserved. So initial momentum is equal to final momentum. So what is the initial momentum? That is equal to M into V because. Uh, Initially, C was moving with velocity v and A was uh, rest, at rest, right? And after hitting, what happens is uh, this A attains a velocity v a and B C attains a velocity v c. So that is equal to m of v a plus m of v c, right? So uh, cutting cancelling out, v is equal to v a plus v c, right? These are two. So comparing, you can see that v a must be equal to v. Uh, sorry. Uh, and uh, Vc is equal to uh, 0, right? It's pretty straightforward. You can see from here V is equal to V and Vc is equal to 0 on solving these questions. So basically, C transforms the entire velocity onto A, right? So now what's happened? Now we don't need to worry about C. C because C is at rest. Now this A, A gets this velocity V, is still connected by this thing to. A B, right? It's basically a string of length L. And uh, okay, so now what will happen? We are just speaking about maximum compression. So we need to find when the maximum compression will occur, occur, right? So you tell me under what which circumstances a maximum compression in the string occurs? Because see, now what happens is V A has a velocity. So this A keeps moving towards B, okay, and as a result, the compression starts occurring because this is moving towards B, right? And B B is at rest, so compression starts occurring, okay. But this is a spring, right? So when compression starts occurring, what happens? The spring puts an equal force of kx. This x is a compression, so it will put a force of kx upon this uh, upon this A, which will dislate this V. So this V keeps on decreasing, right? Because the spring force would try to decrease this velocity V, it would uh, uh, provide a force Kx, which would decelerate this A, right? On the other hand, the same force on he in here Kx would now accelerate B because it is at rest, right? So the velocity of B starts increasing, and velocity of A starts decreasing, and now compression occurs. And when will this compression keep occurring? Right? Till the point VA is greater than VB or equal to VB, right? Because this then what will happen? This A will keep on moving towards B and B would keep on increasing, right? And when and when will this compression stop? When VA will be equal to VB. You are getting because how what's happening here? Because see, at first it was at rest. Okay. Then A attains a velocity V V and compression starts occurring like this. It's further compressed like this and it keeps on compressed. It compresses till the point they start moving with equal velocity. Okay, let this be the V dash and this be V dash. V and A start moving with equal velocity V dash. Then no more compression occurs because they are moving with the same velocity. There is no reactive portion between A and V, right? So basically, this spring force, what it does, it decreases V A, and it keeps on increasing V B, 
till the point v and vb are the same only then the relative motion will be zero and the compression will stop okay so what we have here yeah so initially let's suppose that the final velocity is v dash of both these things right so after hitting initially this a had a velocity b a, a has a velocity v a equal to v right and b was at rest and finally this maximum compression occurs when a has a velocity equal to v dash and b has a velocity equal to v dash mm -hmm. right so in this entire system we can see that the momentum of the system is conserved because the only force acting here is spring force which is decelerating this a and is accelerating this b right so the only force is the spring force but it is an internal force and the net force of uh, upon this entire system is zero right so we can see that momentum is conserved you will look at conserving momentum everywhere you see that the uh, there is no external force upon the system right all the internal forces are there in these problems like even gravitation if you problems you would apply this on of conservation of momentum thing right because wherever you see there is an external force the momentum would be conserved remember that so what is the initial momentum initial momentum is m into va which is equal to m into v and this is the initial uh, momentum over here and what is the final momentum what is the final momentum momentum that is equal to mv dash plus mv dash is equal to 2m v dash okay so basically initial momentum momentum is equal to final momentum in other words mv is equal to 2m v dash uh, so basically that implies v dash is equal to v by 2 right so this is what we get here so what we are asked uh, the kinetic energy of uh, of the system a and ab system at maximum compression of the spring is what okay so at maximum compression of the spring what happens this a has a velocity of v dash and b has a velocity of v dash so kinetic energy at maximum compression what is that equal to that is equal to half m into v uh, v square plus v dash square plus half m into v dash square right because uh, this is this is v dash so what is the kinetic energy of a it's it's kinetic energy is half m v dash square and the kinetic energy of v is half f m v dash square right so this is nothing other than uh, m v dash square okay and putting the value of v dash over here we get that is uh, m v by 2 whole square so that is 1 by 4 m v square so do we have that option yeah we have that option so this is our one correct option and let's check the maximum compression of the spring so during this entire system there is no energy loss anywhere because that it is a frictionless thing right a uh, smooth horizontal flow so there is no friction here so there is mm -hmm. no energy loss in friction so the energy is conserved so what is the initial potential energy it's zero and what is the because the compression was zero and the initial kinetic energy that was equal to uh, half m v square uh, the um, half into mass of a and the velocity of a square that is a half m v square and v was at zero so there is no kinetic energy coming from that initially okay so this is the initial initial k now finally what happens final have what happens is that we get there's a compression x max so the kinetic energy the, the, the potential energy due to this compression is half a uh, half k into x max square plus the kinetic energy of the system that is equal to half m v square right uh, it, so the we can see that the moment energy is conserved over here so from here what we get is half k x max square is uh, 1 by 4 mv square so basically um, 
x max squared is a uh, half m v square by k so from here what is x maximum that is simply v into root over of m by 2k okay so this is our answer so what option do we get um yeah this one so we i can say that this is a very good question because this uh, idea about when the maximum computation would take place a lot of people memorize this but you would you but you shouldn't memorize because a lot of questions would come where they would test your skills okay especially in a exam like idj okay so basically you need to have your concepts clear and have a grasp on these questions we have just practiced a few questions over this and a million of questions can be formed from this uh, from this chapter depending upon equations and just twisting and turning the uh, conditions over here and there but the basic concept is same right wherever you see that there is an external force on the system just think about the at the lines of momentum once okay and if still you see that the question is not solved think about energy if it is comp it is a uh, there it is conserved or not okay that is there, there, there is no loss or something now if there is there was friction and it said like uh, some distance it has moved then you could have uh taken that into account and use this same same thing again but uh it hasn't made that thing made that complicated this question so yeah so that's it for today